Friday morning, a feel-good football Friday ahead of divisional playoff weekend in the NFL. And yes, we've got a local team participating this year for the first time in a very long time. Giants and Eagles, and it's already tomorrow night. We are right here. This week has flown. This week started with me screaming about the Giants beating the Vikings. We have now evolved to Friday where everybody is focused on the Giants and Eagles. And it does feel like, even though the Eagles had a great season and a great record, it does feel like there's lots of folks out there that the that believe the Giants are on a roll. The Giants can do what they did in 2007 and 2011. Brandon Jacobs, Super Bowl champion Giant, was in here saying that the Eagles are all waxed up and shaved up for a whooping. And I'm telling you one thing. I don't know if the Giants are going to win this game. None of us do. But this team is not going to get blown out, and they're going to give their fans a game that much I feel confident in. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Good morning, G. I, I'll tell you, I uh, I kind of feel the same kind of momentum going on around here. Now yeah. I understand why that would be happening. And we all should be uh, jacked up. And, man, I, after a loser night last night for Oof. all the pro teams, uh, three hockey teams in the Nets, uh, you'd like to think, hey, you know, can the Giants do everybody a favor around here and show up on Saturday night and win? And I'll add two more to that. Jerry's Rutgers team did not win, and Eddie the Jockey's pick did not win. Oh, this man. was a full-blown, 100% loser night. I'm telling you, I'm, I am not digging coming in here then. I mean, I, there's, we got to do something to change the mojo around, maybe a sacrifice or something. <laughs> a human sacrifice? A goat know, sacrifice? Maybe, maybe what do you want to do? I don't know. Maybe we could have Al and Jerry do like one of those slap fights that are seem to be oh, popular no. now these oh, days. Oh, my God. You see some of these videos? It's yeah, incredible. I see all the videos. I would say Al and Jerry should do that. And, well, you know, me and loser. Gallo did it. Remember that? Yes. Gallo and I did yeah, that. Yes. And he won. He smacked the hell out of me. I told him, go for it. Come on, do it. And he he did slap me. So so good for him. But, yeah, I mean, something has to happen. But, you know, all those games that we just talked about, I know it's annoying to lose regular season games and whatever and annoying to lose a bet. But, you know, this is the game. This is the only one that matters around here right now uh, with the Eagles. And I do believe, I mentioned this yesterday, that it's funny. When a good team takes that week off and you get so immersed in wild card weekend and that team is sitting on a bye, sometimes you forget about how good they are. Now, the fact that the Philadelphia Eagles did struggle down the stretch, you know, they did have the injury to Jalen Hurts and Gardner Minshew was in there. They had multiple times to clinch that one seed and they could not do it until the final week of the season. So that's sort of in people's heads as well. And what also is in people's heads is Daniel Jones played the best game he's ever played in his life. And the New York Giants went up to Minnesota and beat them convincingly. So I I think that's where the momentum is coming from here. I think we'd feel a little bit differently about the Giants if they ended up in San Francisco this week, but there's something about the Eagles and the way that people are viewing them right now that feels vulnerable. It feels like they can be had. Now, is that the case? I'm not so sure. I think the pendulum has swung a little bit too far to the Eagles or aren't any good. The Eagles with Jalen Hurts or her, all of those things. Because if you look back and you look what they do well, I mean, there's a lot of damn things that that team right. does well. I mean, so the Eagles have won nine straight home games against the Giants. I'm sure you're going to hear a lot about that over the next couple yeah. of days. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, the Eagles literally have one of the best rosters in the NFL, they're right there with the 49ers. Uh, Howie Roseman, uh, you know, has uh, is done an unbelievable job. He really has. And, I mean, the offensive and defensive lines. And I told you, four guys with double-digit sacks, 70 sacks throughout the year. I mean, Daniel Jones is going to have to be the guy that we saw last week. I don't, I'm not saying you have to do any more hurt, hurt what is it, um, Herculean yeah. uh, efforts. But I, I, it's got to be an effort that's going to be similar to last week. Um, and, and, you know, here's the thing. The Giant defense, which is like 28th or 29th in the league, is facing a team that has two solid running backs, a tremendous tight end, two outstanding wide receivers, and the best offensive line in football. And that's why they're the number one seed. And if their quarterback is 100% healthy, he creates a whole other set of circumstances for the Giant defense. You know, he is just like Daniel Jones is to other teams. You know, there are there are times where he'll just take off and go and 
Next thing you know, it's uh, it's first and ten, and he keeps drives moving. So this is going to be a tall order for this Giants team. Don't don't make any bones about that. There's there's oh yeah. We could talk about all how the numbers are lining up and the sports gods and all that other stuff. The reality is is that. The Eagles are number one for a reason, and they have been number one literally since week one. And they had a little bit of a stumble there towards the end simply because Jalen Hurts got hurt. But he uh, he is a he is very difficult to stop, and I just – everybody's just got to pump the brakes. It's not going to be an easy game by any stretch no, of the imagination. No, 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 I don't think anybody thinks it's going to be an easy game. This I just think – it's just one of those things where as the week has gone on, it's sort of like you know, more belief, more belief, more belief. But – the reason why that is, is that, you know, the last time we saw the Eagles, they were struggling a bit in the second half against the, the Giants backups. And the last time we saw the Giants arrested Giants team, they just won a playoff game and looked better offensively than they ever have. Now, remember, it's like, remember, remember how that game went uh, in was a week. When were they here? Week 14 or yeah, something? They, I mean, they killed them. The, the Eagles killed the uh, Giants. Yeah, they, yeah, absolutely. You could see it on display. It was, yeah. I think you felt like the game was over. You know, like within the first ten minutes, like sure. you just knew that they were a much better team, and the Giants aren't who they are today. They they've kind of straightened some things out, and certainly they're healthier on defense than they were in that game, which is in, you know in the secondary, which obviously is going to be very very important in order to win. I think, you know, when I when I think about what it's going to take for the Giants, they certainly can't turn the ball over. They're going to have to get at least a plus two or a plus three in this game. Uh, their their special teams are going to have to do something special. Literally, either box the uh, you know the Eagles in when they're punting. How, you know, you're going to have to convert on third down in this game, which is going to be really hard against this Eagle defense. And I hate to pe- paint a pessimistic uh, viewpoint. I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm just trying to be honest about what. You're well, going to see I when mean, you watch are, these they're games. They're a seven-and-a-half-point underdog for a reason. I mean, I don't think you're being pessimistic about it. I think you're being realistic about it. I mean, the, the, the Giants aren't expected to win this game. I just think that the belief is that they can as opposed to, you know, I mean, how many Jaguar fans out there really believe they can beat the Chiefs? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's that type of belief that it can happen. Not that it will happen, but that it can happen. I mean, it felt like last week going into the Minnesota game, it was like this will happen for the Giants uh, because of all the reasons we talked about last week. This is now more of, you know, it can happen, and especially with some of the upsets we've seen this year and the craziness. I mean, the Giants are playing their best football at the right time, and I don't know if the pressure thing plays into this or or not, you know, where the Eagles have to win this game. The Giants, you'll hear it fast and loose and everything else, and the pressure's not on them, Dude, this and no one a... expected them to be here and all of those things. I don't think it really plays into it all that much, but that's been all the talk. be interesting to see how the rookies do, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal yeah. uh, in this game because the strength of the, the, the Eagles, the really underlying strength of the Eagles are their offensive and defensive lines. You know, that's that it's kind of the same thing for the 49ers. The 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 thing that, you know, people understand because they do talk about it, but everybody focuses on the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and all of these other different skill type players. When you really get down to it, the game's won at the line of scrimmage, and both the 49ers and the Eagles have a much better group than the Giants do. The Giants have a good group and they're coming on and Joe Shane will improve that group as he moves along. And, and let's not, you know, Dexter Lawrence is one of the best defensive tackles in all of football. There's no question about that. But you're asking, you know, a lot from a lot of young players that are going to have to have their best games in order for the Giants to win this weekend. Yeah, and you saw a lot of things last week in that dome up there in Minnesota where guys were running wide open. You saw a lot of rush lanes for Daniel Jones when he broke the pocket and a lot of space for him. You saw even in the big is moments in the game. Darius Slayton on that third down where he could have converted and end the game right there. He's wide open. He drops the ball. You're not going to see that type of defense this week in resistance to the Giants. I'm just telling you, when it comes to size and speed, the two teams that have both of that are the 49ers and the Eagles. Yeah. I would even tell you that you know the Bills and the Bengals are below those two teams when it comes to overall rosters. The difference between you know them and everybody else are their quarterbacks yeah. and their wide receivers, especially for the Bengals. Not so much for the Bills, but more more so for the Bengals. But I, you know, this this is a really you know good team. And you watch, 
you go back and you look at some of the tape from some of the earlier games. I mean, they have manhandled teams. I mean, they have just absolutely steamrolled people. Yeah, I and mean, that was more earlier in the year, and that you know they have a very large point differential, which is something everybody likes to look at with some of these matchups. But yeah, Daniel Jones is not going to get the same opportunities running the football this week. He's not, and and he may he may have some success with some design runs because Dable and Kafka are very very crafty with that, and they can figure schemes out and give Daniel Jones an opportunity opportunity but those broken plays where he is out there and running you're going to see the Eagles do a hell of a lot better job in containing him and I think that if the Giants do win this game Daniel Jones is going to have to have a repeat performance of what he did in Minnesota yeah no turnovers man you can't like I'm he is just gonna he'll be under pressure this whole game I mean and he knows it going in I think we all know it going in uh, that there's going to be pressure around him. And, you know, he'll, he's he's handled it for the most part this year. Uh, but then when you combine their cornerbacks versus the Giants wide receivers, I mean, everything tells you that there's no way the Giants can win this game. But there's one thing that that the Giants have going for them is that they don't know this. They don't they don't believe that. They believe that they can win. And they they believe that they can win by virtue of the fact that they went into Minnesota after losing to Minnesota about four weeks ago. They go in there and they and they extract revenge. Same thing can be said about this particular game lining up the same way. Week 18, Philadelphia had to win the game. The game was tight. Davis Webb kept the game tight. Yeah. Um, and it was a weird kind of ugly game from the Philadelphia perspective. But all they needed to do was win to get this game right now. And hopefully for them, get the NFC Championship game next week in their building. Because they're going to be really, really tough to beat in there. Oh, sure. And I, th- I think the 49ers and the Eagles in an NFC Championship game would be a lot of fun for the audience across the country in the NFL. Not so much as fun here um, because you'd want to see the Giants move on. But, you know, the, thinking about like Giants Cowboys or Giants 49ers in an NFC Championship game seems crazy as I sit here now. But... Um, if they won this game on Saturday night, I don't. It, it wouldn't feel crazy to me. It just because I've seen them the entire year just be annoyingly good. You know, make the plays that you have to make to win the games. You know, and and if they somehow you know can neutralize what they do offensively, the Philadelphia Eagles buy a turnover, buy a big special team play, something like that, then they're going to even the playing field and they can they can win the game. Possession now, time. Possession time is another thing. In yeah. other words, you got to convert and you got to hold on to the ball. And, and you, you know, it's because of the pressure and because of the intensity that the Eagles defense does bring to a game. You know, you go into the game as the quarterback saying, okay, I don't want to make any mistakes. I certainly you have to be really careful, but I also don't want to speed up my game. I don't want to speed up it. I don't want to speed it up in my brain where I'm playing uber fast and making mistakes that way either. There's a there's a balance that you try to find, and I think I feel like Daniel has found that balance as a player. Um, I, but you know, I just think he's going to have to be he's going to have to be spot on. That's all. That's all there is to it, and he knows it, and we all know it, and it will be interesting to see how he handles this pressure that's going to be intense from the Seagull defense. Yeah, and these guys like Isaiah Hodgins, and obviously Slayton's been around, but Isaiah Hodgins, Daniel Bellinger, Richie James, like these guys who have stepped up the entire year that are totally unexpected, you get another chance to shine. And I think there's a lot of people that think that, you know, the, the clock is going to strike midnight. They're going to turn into a pumpkin. It's going to, hey, this can't continue, but... I mean, I think it can. I mean, I don't I don't believe that Isaiah Hodgins is a fluke and he is now a big play guy for them. He is someone that's got to get 75 yards receiving in a game like this to keep up with what the Philadelphia Eagles do on offense. And that's certainly a tall task. And it's a very tall task against the corners that the Philadelphia Eagles have. But they're going to need that from them. I mean, and that's why the Giants have been good this whole year and are in this position. You know, they have squeezed out every single bit from the players that have been on the field the majority of the year. Now, Kenny Galladay has not been on the field, so you could say that that guy and Kadarius Tony they're gone. But the guys who get regular playing time essentially have been at their best. You know, Evan Neal's a guy who's a rookie. He's been up and down, and maybe you're a little bit worried about him going into this game. But for the most part, you know, everybody's played their best game. Well, just remember that, you know, you're going against a completely different animal. Yeah. Everybody knew and everybody felt that Minnesota Vikings were flawed on defense and yeah. it showed itself. 
I, there's not going to be that much space on this field. No. Again, size, speed. Uh, I would also say experience and a young quarterback. The only I, look if if he ends up running and ends up hurting himself again or re-injuring himself, then all bets are off. Sure. Because that's a different team without him. No matter what Micah Parsons says, that is a different team without Jalen Hurts. He is the guy that makes the whole thing go. So there's always that opportunity or chance, I should say, that he may end up getting hurt. And if he does re-injure his collarbone, which is which I believe it is, and I've been telling you that for weeks now, yeah, <clears throat> then all bets are off. And that's that's how uh, I guess delicate these situations can be because of a, an injury that a guy is is been suffering from. So I don't know. I just the more I look at it, the more I, I the more I kind of feel like what the Eagles have, it will take a uh, it will take a great effort by the Giants to win. But that doesn't mean they can't win. Just it's just gonna be a, it's not gonna be that easy. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.